We start tonight with breaking news. We just learned the man accused of a racist attack in Portland earlier this month now faces new bias crime charges from a second incident. The new charges stem from an incident in April. In that case, prosecutors say Dylan Kesterson harassed and assaulted several people based on their race. Kesterson was already facing charges after investigators said he yelled anti-Asian slurs and assaulted a family along the East Bank Esplanade a few weekends ago. In that incident, police said he punched a father and his five-year-old daughter who were visiting from out of town. We also have a tragic update tonight. One of the two victims of an unprovoked attack in downtown Portland has died. Now back on Saturday, June 25th, 82 year old Donald Pierce and 88 year old Edward Lichtenstein were both assaulted at a bus stop. This was near Southwest Fifth and Hall. Authorities say Pierce has now died from his injuries. Lichtenstein was treated and is now out of the hospital. The suspect in the attack, a 29 year old man police have named as Keffer White. He has already been arrested and we expect He'll now face additional charges. We'll keep you updated here and at KGW.com as we learn more. And that attack is just one example of what some call growing safety concerns downtown, ones that are now leading some businesses to close their doors for good. Big chains are not immune here. Coffee giant Starbucks now shutting down two of its stores in the Portland area. And they're part of more than a dozen Starbucks locations across the country slated to close in the coming weeks. Mike Benner reports from downtown Portland. A spokesperson for Starbucks tells us that safety concerns for both staff and customers is the reason for the closures. The Starbucks here at Southwest 4th and Morrison is one of the stores closing here in Portland. The other is east of the I-84, I-205 interchange. This Starbucks near Northeast Halsey and 102nd means a lot to Tony Russell. I met my bestest, dearest friend Jim here, you know, 10 years ago. and. He's just the bestest guy ever. Count that among the reasons why Russell is devastated to learn the coffee shop is closing. It just breaks my heart. The Gateway Area Starbucks and a second store at Southwest 4th and Morrison downtown are two of more than a dozen Starbucks stores closing across the country. Oh, it's a bummer. I mean, it's where I go all the time, where my whole office, like my whole office goes. A Starbucks spokesperson tells KGW the coffee giant is closing a total of 16 stores in Portland, Seattle, Los Angeles, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C. Senior vice presidents of U.S. operations point to personal safety, racism, lack of access to health care, a growing mental health crisis, and rising drug use as reasons for the closures. I honestly think it's pretty safe. While Sandy Shell has not had any problems at the downtown Portland Starbucks that is closing, Tony Russell has seen firsthand the challenges at the Gateway store that is closing its doors. Because I've been in there when people have, you know, been just crazy as all get out, you know, and and they they try to get them out of there and they go in the bathrooms and they're in there for a half hour or more and you know they're in there shooting up and going crazy in there. Russell is hoping the employees at her favorite Starbucks can find work at other stores, something the company is pledging to facilitate. I mean, it's just really sad that this is going on, you know. It's worth mentioning there's been a lot of chatter online that some of the stores closing down either unionized recently or were in talks to do so. A Starbucks spokesperson tells me while that is the case, it played no role in deciding what stores to close and what stores to keep open. Reporting in downtown Portland, I'm Mike Benner for KGW News. Developing tonight, Gresham is pausing its school resource officer program, citing staff shortages. Gresham police say they have 19 sworn officer positions to fill and the SROs will be reassigned to patrol duties. They'd work with the Centennial, Gresham, Barlow and Reynolds school districts. The city says it plans to reestablish the SRO program once police staffing stabilizes. Well, it is the season for street racing and this afternoon a lot of folks are talking about a big street meetup that ended in Beaverton with the police taking some action. Let's bring in Galen Etlin now. Galen, though the police were involved here, this apparently wasn't about street racing, but instead socializing. Yes, David, a lot of people who were not there leapt to that street racing idea, a big issue we've been following in the Portland area. But in this case, last night in Beaverton, organizers and law enforcement were actually on the same page. The event was outside the 7-Eleven off of Southwest Murray and Millican Way. People gathered to socialize and share their unique cars. 
There was no racing and organizers made sure to emphasize safe driving and no revving of engines. But in the end, a few people did speed away from the event, which meant Beaverton police and Washington County Sheriff's deputies responded. So it sounds like in this case, the event was legal until it wasn't. Yes, um, one of our deputies ended up talking to the event organizer who actually told them this isn't what I was going for. This it wasn't the idea. This was more of a meetup car show type thing. Um, but unfortunately, it sounds like some people showed up who um, had other ideas. So ultimately, law enforcement cited a few people who broke traffic laws there, but most people at this street meetup did not do anything wrong. Online, we have seen a lot of speculation relating to the Beaverton event, uh, talking about street takeovers and racing in Portland. But as you heard, that was not the intent with the Beaverton meetup. Now, Portland police, meanwhile, have had several sting operations and towed away dozens of vehicles in street racing cases. We've got more info on KGW.com. Back to you. Thank you, Galen. Two people were hurt in a boating accident on the Willamette River. This all happened yesterday in Newburgh. Investigators say the victims were on an inner tube, and they say the boat operator hauling them overcorrected so far while making a turn that the tube swung back and hit the boat, hurting the men riding it. One has life-threatening injuries. The other is also hurt, but with less severe injuries. Investigators say the boat operator showed no visible signs of impairment, but a lack of experience towing an inner tube may have been a factor. Well, new tonight, the suspected drug trafficker charged in connection with a fentanyl death of a Portland high school student will remain behind bars pending his trial. A federal judge this afternoon ordered that 24-year-old Manuel Antonio Souza Espinoza of Vancouver should remain in custody. Now, KGW News has confirmed this is a photo of the suspected trafficker. Prosecutors allege Espinoza was the third level drug dealer in a supply chain that eventually sold a counterfeit prescription pill to Griffin Hoffman. Investigators say that pill turned out to be fentanyl. The 16-year-old sophomore and tennis star who attended Northeast Portland's McDaniel High died in early March. Now, during the hearing today via video link, Griffin's mother, Carrie Cohen, addressing the judge briefly before he issued his decision, saying in part, quote, he's not just a victim for us. He was and will always be our precious child who lost a chance to live his life. Espinoza's next court appearance is scheduled for September. Jury selection has started in the trial of Patriot Prayer founder Joey Gibson this week. Prosecutors accuse him of taunting and instigating a fight with Antifa outside of Portland Bar in 2019. Gibson faces a felony riot charge. He's pleaded not guilty. Three other Patriot Prayer members were already indicted and pleaded guilty for their roles in the fight. Well, a small business owner in St. Helens needs help tracking down a thief. Diana Johnston runs the Royal Quick Clean Laundromat. She says yesterday evening someone came in and used power tools to drill into a dollar coin machine and then walked out with thousands of dollars worth. Now, Johnston says it just happened in minutes. The man knew what he was doing. He had the tools, he had the speed, he had the efficiency. I have no doubt that other small business owners have experienced the same occurrence. And so she wants them to step up and call in. Johnson runs that laundromat with her husband. She says they have surveillance video of the suspect and have also filed a police report. Today, the U.S. Justice Department named Oregon's prison system director for the top federal prison system job. Colette Peters will run the Federal Bureau of Prisons. She's been the director of the Oregon Department of Corrections since 2012 and is focused on reducing the prison population. The Biden administration describes her as a, quote, reform-minded outsider. She starts in August. Well, let's talk about gas prices because it has been a summer of struggle, but yes, they are finally coming down a bit here in the Pacific Northwest. Now, Devin Haskins has the handful of local spots with gas finally under, dare we actually say, $5 a gallon. It seems strange to be celebrating gas for under $5 a gallon, but hey, it's been a while since we've seen those numbers here on the West Coast. It's still pretty expensive, and if you've filled up even once recently, you've definitely felt it. According to AAA, gas in Washington costs an average of $5.34 a gallon, and in Oregon, it's a little higher at $5.38. AAA says that the war in Ukraine is still keeping gas prices higher, with Russia being one of the major oil producers in the world. Nationwide, the average for a gallon of gas much lower at $4.65 a gallon. At the Evergreen Food Mart in Vancouver, it was one of the cheapest in our areas at $4.88 a gallon. That was on Monday. 
It was one of at least a dozen in Vancouver and around the metro area that has seen gas prices drop below that $5 mark, which for drivers, that was pretty good news as they filled up. I mean, celebrating uh, gas under $5 a gallon is kind of a strange thing. I remember uh, I, I pulled up to a gas station with a friend the other day. It was just like, dude, like gas is 480. Like once upon a time, that was ridiculous. Like we'd be mad if we were paying 480 and now we're like stoked about it. This is the lowest I've seen it on my trip so far. Uh, just down the road is also the highest I've seen at 560. All right, so let's level those expectations that the gas price is continuing to fall. The 2022 Atlantic hurricane season is also underway. Severe weather could impact production along the Gulf Coast in the coming months, which could make those prices rise again. I'm Devin Haskins. KGW News.